Hi everyone, welcome back to the cottage. Today's video should be a fun one as we take a tour around the house and discuss 70 plus decluttering ideas to get you set up for a clutter-free new year. Now I have done a video previously where I discussed the first eight categories I believe a person should start with when they are beginning to simplify their life or they're starting a minimalist journey. These were sort of broad general categories. I maybe gave a few examples within each group, but today we are actually going to dive really deep and go room by room through a typical home and talk about those different items, those ideas of things that could be decluttered from each room type. Now, just because it is on this list, I have a large list over 70 items. Just because it's on the list does not mean that you need to get rid of it. This is all about ideas, generating the thoughts and um, the process. This video is also being released near the beginning of the holiday season and we can expect that there will probably be some new things coming into our lives and so use this as a way to motivate you to get rid of some of the excess, the things that you're not using in your home, get rid of that to make way for some of the new things that you might be bringing in. You might find something that you declutter that you actually just want to replace for a Christmas gift for example and that is great, it makes space for that. So I have a lot to cover. Let's get started with room number one, the garage. I'm starting with the garage because it tends to be a sort of hodgepodge for miscellaneous items that don't have a place inside the home. They are usually shoved into the garage and you don't really think about them that much because you don't come in contact with them on a regular basis. The types of items that you might find here include extra tools. If you have five hammers, for example, do you need all five of them? There might be some small yard equipment such as extra rakes or brooms that you're not using. There may be paint cans that are nearly empty that you are holding on to because you kept that little bit of paint that was left over in case there's a scuff or something on the wall that you want to repair. You might have some extra building materials such as a few extra tiles from a tiling project or a small bit of carpet remnant. You may also have some specialized outdoor gear such as hunting equipment or fishing gear. What about the more bulky items that take up space in the garage? The bikes, the ride-on toys, the larger yard equipment. Those things if they're not being used are just a constant annoyance because you're moving them around. Or you may even have an extreme bulky item such as a boat. This is something that is kind of common in Minnesota. I don't know about other states, but you might have a boat that's just parked there. And this is one we don't think about that often, but what about those broken items that made their way from the house out to the garage because you were planning on fixing them and you never got around to it. I bet about 50% of the people watching this today can raise their hand to that item on the list. I know that we have been guilty of this as well. And I can't leave the garage without talking about sports equipment. You might have basketballs that don't hold air anymore, a dull pair of ice skates, or some random soccer cleats that no longer fit. So going through those items might find you some things that you can declutter easily. All right, let's move indoors now. I'm going to start with the kitchen because it tends to be a very popular room in the house and there's usually a lot of stuff within it. Let's start the list with some obvious items in the kitchen such as expired canned goods. We don't always take the time to look and see what's been expired, but if you have expired food, go ahead and get rid of that. Also in your fridge, if you have sauces that, you know, maybe you tried it but you didn't like it that much and you're just kind of holding it, those could probably be tossed as well. Do you have extra silverware or place settings that are just taking up space in your cabinets or drawers? Or what about the classic Tupperware that has lost its lid? If it doesn't have the pair match, do you want to keep it around? Think also about all of the soft stuff that's in the kitchen, the towels, dishcloths, pot holders, the things that can get stained and ripped. If they are looking kind of ragged, it might be time to declutter them. This is one of those items like I was talking about earlier in the video, you might want to add to your Christmas list. Hey, I would like to have some new towels for the kitchen. So go ahead and declutter the ones you have now to make room for those new ones. Kitchens also tend to have a lot of small appliances or gadgets that do only one job. I'm talking about rice cookers or salad spinners, these different things that are supposed to make our lives easier but then they take up a lot of space. You may have lunch boxes, coolers, or ice packs that have seen better days, and you also might have an abundance of water bottles, sippy cups, and coffee mugs. 
The dining room is the next space that I want to talk about and typically they're not filled with a lot of stuff but there were a few ideas that I got from this space. First of all, if you have extra table linens such as tablecloths or placemats, linen napkins that you're not using, those could be a good idea for decluttering. You may have a hutch within your dining room that holds extra dinnerware or specialized holiday dishes that you don't find yourself bringing out very often anymore. Or the other furniture, the table or the chairs, if those items are broken, think about replacing them. And the last item that I want to talk about in the dining room is decluttering the piles. This is a little bit obscure, but a lot of people that I talk to about their dining spaces mention how the table ends up becoming a drop zone for a lot of them. So it might be that the first thing that you declutter from this list is the piles that you have on your dining table. Let's move into the living room. If you have any bulky furniture or furniture that you purchased just to kind of take up space in the room, sometimes people will do this. They feel that the space is too bare and so they buy extra chairs, extra side tables, if you have extra throw pillows or blankets, now might be a good time to declutter some of those items. Another item that you could consider decluttering from the living room would be any decor that you have hanging up or around the room that you don't love or appreciate, or if you have a lot of knickknacks on shelving units within the room that you are just tired of dusting around. And lastly, plants. Plants tend to be a common fixture in the living room and this can be a burden for a lot of people that they feel that they have to constantly take care of these plants and they don't love it but they feel like they should have plants because it's the living room. If you aren't finding joy in your plants, you can go ahead and declutter them. The next room, the family room, is not one that every single home will have where the living room is a bit more formal and some place that guests might visit. The family room, I'd say, is more of a casual space, a lounging space. The kids tend to spend a lot of time there. A lot of family rooms have a media center where the TV and electronics are stored. You may have some game consoles that aren't being used or games that aren't being used, DVDs, music CDs, um, remote controls, these types of items all kind of fit within that media center. There may also be bookshelves within the family room. If there are books on those shelves that you are not reading or you don't plan to read again, you can declutter those. Because family rooms are very kid friendly, there might also be art supplies, coloring books, games, and things like this in that space as well. The family room might also be where you keep your musical instruments. Maybe you have a piano set up in there. If you have sheet music for your instruments that you are no longer referencing, that could be a good idea for decluttering or your actual instruments. If you don't find yourself picking up your guitar anymore, consider donating it or gifting it to somebody that could find value in that item. Let's move on to the bedroom spaces now. First, we're going to talk about the adult bedroom spaces, master bedroom, and then we will move on to kids' bedrooms. So for the adult bedrooms, if you have linens that you are no longer using, maybe you had a style of linen and you had all the pillows and everything that all coordinated together, but you have moved on from that style, but kept those linens just in case you might want to go back to them later, chances are that's not going to happen. You could declutter those extra linens. Bedside tables might be a spot where random items start to accumulate. Go through those things and see what you could declutter from them. And one thing that I've seen people declutter a lot from a master bedroom is the bedside lamps. Those have become a little bit obsolete, I would say. A lot of people are moving towards sconces on the wall or just completely eliminating the lamps altogether because they're not really used that often. In the closet within the master bedroom, there is quite a bit of things that could be found. Now, again, you might have a large walk-in closet that has a lot of items in it, or you might just have a simple closet space. But within closets, again, we're behind those closed doors, things get forgotten about. There's probably some clothing that you have in there. This might sound like a broken record, but if you don't love it, you don't use it, you probably don't need to keep it anymore. If you have shoes that are scuffed up and you're almost embarrassed to wear them, why are they still in your closet? Also consider your jewelry or your neckties, scarves. Think about these things and decide how many that you actually want to keep, how many you plan on using. 
In a child's bedroom, there is possibly a toy component. Maybe there are toys that the child has outgrown, no longer plays with anymore. Those could be decluttered, maybe to make way for Christmas gifts, for example, or books that are below their reading level, they're just not interested in. Those could be um, put in the donation bin as well. If they have clothing that has been outgrown, unless there's a younger sibling coming up close behind that you could pass them down to. I wouldn't recommend holding on to them because styles are constantly changing um, and fabric doesn't last forever, so donating those might be a good idea. And finally, in a child's bedroom, there is usually an area where they keep all of their treasures. I would definitely recommend you sitting down with your child if they have this type of spot and going through that with them and talking through these different items. Generally, there's probably going to be things in there that you would consider decluttering that they might not be willing to part with, but if you talk with them through that process, there might be some things that you can find, maybe rocks or sticks or who knows what could be in the treasure box. All right, bathrooms. Bathrooms tend to be one of the smaller spaces within any home, but it's amazing the amount of things that you can find to declutter within a bathroom. I'm talking about products that you purchased that you thought you might love, they might help you out with your skincare routine, but you didn't end up liking. Those could be decluttered. Hair care or grooming items such as brushes or curling irons or fingernail clippers if they are broken or you don't use them. Worn out bath towels or washcloths or even loofahs, if they're worn out, you don't need to keep them around. You could consider replacing them. Bath mats, they don't tend to age well, so if you have a worn out bath mat, that's another thing that you could consider decluttering or replacing. Tub toys, if you are out of the season where your children are taking baths anymore, I know these tub toys kind of hold some sort of sentimental value to many of us, but if they're not being used, they probably don't need to remain in your bathroom. Also take a close look inside of your medicine cabinet to see if there's any expired medications in there or any products that you had tried again that did not work for you and get rid of those. Those will need to be disposed of properly. So check your local city website to see what those um, rules are. Let's talk quickly about home offices. And again, this is another space that not every single home has, but these items, if they're not in a contained room, are probably throughout your home. So listen to this list of ideas. You could declutter cords that you have that you don't remember what they belong to anymore. If you have broken pencils or pencils that the eraser is really worn down, Duplicates of small office supplies such as hole punches or staplers, if you don't need two of them and you can get by with one, then one of them could be decluttered. And along those same lines, if you have any old electronics, I'm talking about cameras or floppy disks or microphones, in your office, you may have some notes or reference materials that were very important to you when you were first starting out in your job, but now you don't find yourself looking at them anymore. If that's the case, they could possibly be decluttered as well. And your file cabinet. A lot of times offices will have file cabinets that are just filled to the brim with papers and you need to take the time to go through them. I know when we went through the process of decluttering our, our file cabinet, I found so many things in there that I couldn't believe I had held on to for all those years. Yes, of course, there are some important documents that you need to keep for a number of years for records, but I was finding things like receipts from something that was purchased 10 years ago. There's no need to hold on to that type of thing because it's just taking up space in the room. All right, let's talk about storage or accessory type of spaces. Do you have a tote that is filled with kids' art projects? I know that we had multiple totes and it took up so much space in our storage closet. And now we have decluttered all of those. We took pictures of everything and made them into small thin books. That was a huge weight off of our shoulders. In your storage space, you may have items that were gifted to you that you didn't really like when you first got them. Or if you have a memory box where you store some sentimental things, but you have certain things in that memory box that bring up bad memories, those items can go. Another thing I would encourage you to think about decluttering is any seasonal item that you don't use at least once a year. And finally, I'm putting in a category just called random items. I don't know where in your house you might keep these things or if you keep these things, but these were some things that came to mind that could be good ideas to declutter if you do have them in your home and you're not using them. 
pet supplies or toys that you have sitting around. So if you bought the be all end all kitty litter box that was supposed to solve all your kitty litter problems, but your cat didn't end up liking it, um, you feel guilty for getting rid of it because it costs you quite a bit of money, you can get rid of that and declutter it, give it to some other cat that might use it. Old greeting cards, cards that you got for Christmas or birthdays or anniversaries, if you don't plan to look at them on a regular basis and appreciate them, then you honestly do forget about them and they're just taking up space. This one is pretty common, baby gear or baby items that you kind of hold on to, either expecting another child perhaps in the future or thinking of saving it for future generations. Now, I get it, if you have um, an idea that you're gonna be growing your family, I understand keeping some of those items because you don't want to rebuy them again. But some things will not stand the test of time and especially for long periods of time. So thinking of keeping some baby gear for your grandkids, for example, is probably not the best idea because safety regulations change through the years and um, styles change and the odds of your kids wanting to use the gear that they use for their kids is probably pretty low. And finally, on this list of 70 plus ideas, for things that you can declutter from your home, I'm adding a very sentimental one and that is photo albums that you are not enjoying. A lot of times we have photo albums filled with pictures. Many of them are very, very similar. And if you're not actually using them, enjoying them, I would suggest that you go through them, get rid of any duplicates or very similar looking pictures and consolidate into smaller amounts of photo albums so that you can actually enjoy them or do what we like to do and that is to take those photos and display them. I am a person that loves photographs. I feel like they're very special, probably my favorite sentimental item of all time. So I would definitely not suggest that you get rid of all photographs. I'm just talking about paring them down a little bit. All right, that was a big list, a lot to process through. I hope that it gave you some ideas of things that you could potentially look at decluttering in your own home. If there was something that I didn't mention that you found through your decluttering journey that should be added, I would love to hear about that down in the comment section that could give the viewers of this video additional ideas of things that could be decluttered. Remember, you don't have to declutter everything that's on this list. There may be things that you really love and cherish and you all the time that I mentioned. I'm not saying you have to get rid of those. So thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.